Top Billing, billing. Uptown Murph. Top Billing, Billing. Yo, here's something you can't understand. I want to react to this article right here in ESPN about your man eat at Geno's, a.k.a. Grub at Geno's. It says, could Seattle draft a QB? What's next for Geno Smith Seahawks? So this is a pretty interesting read by this cat named Brady Henderson. Um, he goes on to talk um, about, and this actually has quotes in here, so uh, I guess he's Got a chance to interview Geno Smith talking about uh, the end of the Pete Carroll era, um, talking about uh, different things of that nature. But some of this stuff kind of jumped out to me, and uh, we'll hit on a couple of topics here. They were talking about the pardon ways and the uh, the angst. Uh, will Geno Smith be back? Will he not? Will he be retained there? They were talking about the markers and the contract, uh, the guaranteed money, and who's on the roster, who's not on the roster, and all this and that. Uh, then it says right here, despite the rough patches that Smith and Seattle's offense experienced last season, he still finished 14th in QBR, uh, 59.5. That was down from 7th, 62.8 in 2022 when he made the Pro Bowl on the initial ballot and won NFL Comeback Player of the Year. So he was 14th last year, 7th the year before. If you were to do an average of that, you know what I mean, right? Uh, you can see where I'm going with that there. However, it says, while the offensive line remains a question after struggling in 2023, and boy, did it. You know what I'm saying? I've been labbing this film heavily in preparation for the draft, and I knew the offensive line was bad, obviously, because I did film studies on every, on it on every week. But being able to really have more time and not be on a time crunch and just labbing it, it was horrific, absolutely horrific. There are reasons to be optimistic about Smith's prospects for a bounce-back season. After finishing 2023 with the NFL's best QBR, 81.5 over the final six weeks, he'll have his top four targets remaining with Seattle re-signing tight end Noah Fant and agreeing to a restructured deal with receiver Tyler Lockett Launcher. He then goes on to talk about Ryan Grubb, and he mentions, of course, Seattle could possibly upgrade the interior offensive line, which would be definitely a top two or three choice. If I were making a decision there, they talked about Troy Fatanu, and then he goes on to say about Grubb's offense. So Gino's been labbing that. He says, I would say it's pretty complex. There's a lot of volume, a lot of verbiage, a lot of different plays, a lot of different concepts, protections, and all those things. That's a good thing. I love to hear that right there. To me, Smith is one of these cerebral assassin types. We know he's day in, day out uh, studying that playbook, probably getting the guys together and all that there. So that's definitely something, if I'm you guys, I will be looking forward to. Now, that doesn't say that will come with success because you're not only implementing something new to some older players who are used to a certain way for the past however many years, uh, you're also doing that with a new coaching staff who has to get adjusted to an NFL, NFL schedule, even though coaching is coaching. Uh, you're still doing it at a different level that these guys don't have an experience doing. Even a cat like Mike McDonald doesn't have experience being a head coach and being able to uh, delegate stuff to people and all that. So he's learning on the job. Grubb will be learning on the job to a certain extent. The entire offense will be learning on the job. The entire defense, while – Learning on a job for guys like a John Schneider to understand the personnel and, and what he exactly needs and goes into having these new schemes. So keep that in mind as well. But what does that look like for Gino? I think that even the staunchest of critics, right, if they weren't complete dumbasses, could admit that every year it seems like he adds something to his game. I remember thinking the year before last that his pocket presence could use some work. And this past season, right, with bad pass protection like you see right here he was able to navigate the pocket pretty damn cleanly and deliver with his eyes upfield just like you see on this particular play right here look at this motion skip motion immediate breach off the left side Gino steps up and out Jakob delivers the locket launcher who bang <laughs> gets locket launched <laughs> why he always dying off and then he comes back to life I like Lockett Launcher. That man always dying off. Look at that. You see the breach right there? That was off the left and the right side. What are we doing here? 
Let's go back on that right quick. Take the feelings out of it, right? The no feelings lead here. It's not about what you feel. What do you see right here? Look at this. This is immediate exterior pressure off the left. Look at the interior pressure coming from the inside approach off the right side on Cross's side there. And what does he do? He keeps his head up, right? While the man's on his pocket, his back pocket right there, and is still able to find an outlet in Tyler Lockett there. That is playing some very heady football from a veteran. Staring down the gun barrel in the face of adversity, you see him open up to the wrong side, right? Uh, the pass protection had to go off the other side, so he opened up to the wrong side. But look at this pinpoint accuracy right there to Jackson Smith and Jigba. Mind Jigba. Check this out. Coming out of the pool. Uh, you can still see the Rams with that fabricated pressure coming off there. And they do a good job of kind of collapsing the pocket, but he stands in the face of adversity. And look at the throw. 1,000% I expect Jackson Smith and Jigba to be able to haul this in because all he had to do was drag the toe on that. But look where the throw is. Look at the product placement. Absolutely incredible throw right there. Not his fault the pass wasn't completed, but not enough people talking about shit like this. A lot of people will talk about it if he misses, but they won't point out the fact that, damn, this guy can actually make some very good passes uh, that not a lot of people in the NFL are making on a routine basis. I had an aha moment. Somebody was up on the channel talking about Geno Smith has no heart. I said, aha. People will say anything when they don't like someone. Geno Smith having no heart makes zero sense because he played behind a poor offensive line and would deliver throws like that. Staring down the gun barrel, the scariest guy in the NFL, Aaron Donald, coming right up on him, hitting him in his chops and still able to stand there and deliver for his team accurately. So think about that right here. You see Aaron Donald coming on this twist, not picked up by Damian Lewis a clear path to get vertical right on Geno Smith he knows he's gonna get hit but he still stands in there and delivers from the pocket bang goldfish swimming all through his eyes and everything he was done but he still got that first down but here's the most important part of this article here because I'm trying to get beyond the Geno Smith stuff. I've been actually focusing on the future for the Seattle Seahawks and talking about Sam Howell, who I believe to be easily as talented as anyone in this draft after probably, yeah, I would say probably after Jay and Daniels, right? Maybe Drake May, but listen, those guys were teammates and he started over Drake May. So he was already the starter. So take that for what it's worth. But uh, Michael Penix, Bo Nix, and all these guys like that, I don't really see a difference between them, right? People are going to try to compare Sam Howell playing in the NFL against these guys playing at weak colleges or against weak defenses in college. That's not the same, dude. Chances are if they were in the same exact situation as Sam Howell, they too would have produced similar results, if not worse. That's what I'm standing on with my analysis there. I think Sam Howell could be a good quarterback for you guys in the future. But if not, the 16th pick doesn't make sense to me for what you guys have now, right? So that's why I did the thing on Geno. At least for a year, he should be serviceable, right? We'll, we'll just call him serviceable, right? So we can get past that or whatever like that. In the future, Sam Howell, why would you – want to not see what Sam Howell has and draft a guy with the 16th pick. Why even go out and get him? You could have signed anybody off the off the streets um, who's an actual veteran free agent. So Sam Howell is a veteran. He has over 600 and something throws in the NFL, but he's on a rookie contract. You could have got one of these guys, these one-year guys or something like that to fill in. Plenty of those guys out there. To me, that would signify that you would want to see what Sam Howell has in the future. That's why this guy said this. Well, actually, before that, he said that while the Seahawks have made it clear that Howell is the backup, Schneider said at the combine he absolutely believes he's a number one caliber quarterback, noting how he's only 23 years old and has 18 career starts. So he has a leg up on everybody else in the draft in that particular group level, however you want to group those guys, right? After Jaden Daniels and, of course, Caleb Williams, um, and if you want to throw Drake May in there, you can do that. J.J. McCarthy, I always forget about him because I don't think he's that good. 
I think he'll be serviceable in the NFL. Uh, he's one of these guys. I, I just, I just don't see it. Right? I just don't see it. So that doesn't mean he can't get better in the future. He can't outplay what I think that he may do, uh, for sure. No doubt about that. But I look at him a lot like I looked at Zach Wilson. Right. So go back and check out what I was saying about Zach Wilson back then, and uh, JJ McCarthy looking like a, a, like a game manager in college. Now, that's rare, right? College should be the where you go against sorry defenses and everything. Uh, you should be able to do your thing out. Beyond those guys, like I said before, Nick's Penix and on him like that. He has a leg up on because he's their age or even a little younger, and he already has 18 career starts. So. He's just going into his third season. I think somebody had told me they thought that he was going into like his fifth season or something like that. Nah, not at all. So what does that do? That man said it right here. But taking a quarterback next week, perhaps even at some point on day two, is still not out of the question. So that brings me full circle back to what I said before. And we talked about Spencer Rattler. I was going to do something on Jordan Travis, I think, of course. Uh, he could be a good option there. I, you know what I'm saying? I don't, definitely don't see anything different between him and Sam Howell. Uh, they have kind of similar skill sets there. Joe Milton. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. If you are going to bring in a young QB, make it be somebody who has a totally different skill set, who is a third QB when you have a veteran in Geno Smith, a young veteran in Sam Howell, this guy can be groomed behind both of those guys there and then offer you something totally different. Like a guy like that with his big ass arm and his athleticism and his frame that's different than both of those guys. Due to what your man John Schneider did in free agency, this could be a draft to where it may be more feasible for them to trade back and accumulate more picks. Now, to me, he did the damn thing in free agency. So if he did stay at 16, Targeting an interior line of scrimmage player on either side of the ball seems the way to go. But if we're talking about adding another young quarterback, in the article he said day two. So day two these days means the, I think the Friday, right? It's first round and then the second on one day and then the rounds two and three on day two. So if he's saying that, uh, you would have to go with him with the, as it stands right now, I guess the 81st pick. Hmm. Uh, I guess depending on who you would get at 16, we're only talking about as it stands right now. We can redo that if they trade the pick or or do all that, whatever like that. But uh, the 81st pick for a Joe Milton. Hmm. Yeah, a guy's extremely talented. If you feel like you can have something special with him in the future, why not take a flyer on him with that pick there? But depending on who's aboard even right there, uh, if you could somehow swing that to right here, fourth round, 102, right? The 102nd pick, that would be, to me, an ideal spot to get a Joe Milton, especially when you have a veteran in, starter in Geno Smith, who they said, no, the article said it, that he'll be the starter. So Sam Howell to back up for a year, then you see what you have with him. Uh, hopefully, he, he would just stick, and he would be the guy from there on, right? But if not, then you have Joe Milton waiting on the wings and you have been grooming him. Like I said before, that skill set is something special. He just has to hone in on the little things, right? The skill set is special, but having a special skill set does not mean that you will be a good quarterback. So to me, uh, he was showed himself to be at least promising, but he doesn't have that many attempts, even though he was in college all that time. So getting him more acclimated or better QB coaching into inside of a system. You never know. Maybe he could be like a Jordan Love uh, was under an Aaron Rodgers. So think about that there. So let me know what you think about that. That is a very interesting article. Uh, it still really talks about what do you do with Sam Howell or how do you approach having Sam Howell? Because I said it before, they do need to draft a quarterback. I'm not, I'm, I didn't do those film studies for no reason. They need to draft a quarterback because they need three quarterbacks on the roster, or at least some, some semblance of three quarterbacks, right? A practice squad or something. So they were to go out and get maybe another veteran or somebody like that cheap or the, off the chopping block or somebody like that. You can just have on a pack, practice squad. That will make sense as well. Um, but if they are looking to have a young quarterback, it still does not make sense to me at the 16th pick when you have Sam Howell. So he said day two or three. That makes sense. Joe Million. All right. Let me know what you think, though. It's your boy, Jersey Murph. As always, thank you for supporting out there. 
Big love to everybody out there, man. All my top billing villains. Salute. Top billing. Top billing. Uptown Murph. Uptown Murph.